Why SpaceX is using a new fuel Elon Musk and SpaceX are known to change things once in a while. SpaceX is known to use a kerosene-based fuel in its Falcon 9. However, in recent times, it seems like they've changed the liquid that powers their engine. Today we'll be talking about why SpaceX is using a new fuel. They've used a kerosene-based fuel for ages now and have been successful with it. What is this fuel change? Why was it needed? Well, stick around to the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve into the reasons behind this change. Without further ado, let's start the video. Before we discuss the fuel change, let us discuss why this switch was done and why other fuels weren't used. For Saturn V, the first stage eventually shut down and separated, allowing the second to blast into life. This time, it's liquid hydrogen that powers it, a more efficient fuel that took up too much room. Because liquid hydrogen is less thick than kerosene, it must be mixed with liquid oxygen in significantly higher proportions. The Saturn V first stage required 0.6 liters of kerosene for every liter of liquid oxygen consumed, whereas the second stage required 3.25 liters of liquid hydrogen for every liter of oxygen. Liquid hydrogen was not a possibility because NASA engineers couldn't build the Saturn V first stage fuel tanks any bigger. That is the task that SpaceX faces as it creates the next generation of heavy lift rockets, which will not take us just to the moon, but also to Mars. The Raptor engines of the Starship will not run on kerosene or liquid hydrogen. Methane will be used, a fuel that has been studied several times throughout the previous century of rocket fuel research, receiving honorable mentions in John D. Clark's seminal book, Ignition, but never seeing widespread use. So, why is SpaceX now employing it? Putting people on the moon in the 1960s was one of the most challenging technological tasks we've ever faced. But sending humans to Mars is a far more difficult endeavor, especially when you consider the immense problem of sustaining a human presence on the red planet. How can you keep launch costs down? How do you create the oxygen you need to stay alive? The water you need to grow food and drink and the fuel you'll need to make a return trip to Earth. Hydrogen and kerosene aren't perfect. Kerosene is a combination of a long chain hydrocarbons with up to 20 carbons in length that is recovered from crude oil by fractional distillation. The longer a hydrocarbon is, the more difficult it is to burn entirely in oxygen, as it takes more oxygen per gram of fuel to oxidize it into carbon dioxide and water. As a result, even in its refined form, kerosene frequently burns inefficiently instead of disintegrating into smaller reactive radicals. Coking, or the formation of sooty carbon particles, is the outcome, as shown in the Saturn V's launch. This soot may quickly block a rocket engine's delicate system, posing a barrier to SpaceX's goal of making its engines reusable with minimal maintenance, especially on Mars, where there will be no facilities to address these challenges. Of course, liquid hydrogen does not have this difficulty, and it also burns more effectively than kerosene. With a precise impulse, we can calculate this efficiency. The specific impulse of a fuel describes how well it can convert mass into thrust. To grasp this, consider total impulse, which defines the thrust force created across the engine's whole burn cycle. We may simply graph this by plotting the thrust provided by the engine in each second of its flight, which may look like this. The total impulse is calculated by calculating the area beneath this graph which gives us the total energy delivered by the rocket. This is a useful metric in and of itself. However, because not all propellants are created equal, the specific impulse is preferable. Two alternative fuel and oxidizer combinations could produce the same overall impulse, but we must take into account the weight of the fuel and oxidizers themselves, as the beginning weight of the rockets is always dominated by the weight of their fuel. We divide the entire impulse by the total propellant weight the rocket ejected to get the average specific impulse. The liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen fuel mixture are by far the best on this parameter. Hydrogen has a substantially higher specific impulse than kerosene, roughly 390 seconds compared to 285 seconds for kerosene. Hydrogen, on the other hand, is far less dense than kerosene as previously stated. Much larger gasoline tanks are required. Because hydrogen has an extremely low boiling point of minus 252.8 degrees Celsius, the tanks must be heavily insulated to prevent liquid hydrogen from expanding. 
However, because thermodynamic equilibrium is a war of attrition that the universe will always win, boil-off valves must be used to release gaseous hydrogen to prevent an explosion. All of this adds weight and complexity to the rocket. In a process known as hydrogen embrittlement, hydrogen destroys and weakens metals. This is a huge problem for SpaceX's reusability design philosophy. We may gain a sense of the difference between these three fuels by combining two parameters, density and specific heat of combustion. We'd need 11.9 liters of hydrogen, 2.2 liters of kerosene, or 5.5 liters of methane to release 100 megajoules of energy from each of these three fuels. Methane resembles kerosene far more than hydrogen. Fuel tanks can be smaller than liquid hydrogen fuel tanks, but not small enough to provide substantial performance advantages over kerosene. The increase in specific impulse is almost neutralized when the necessary design changes to switch from kerosene to liquid methane are undertaken, such as increasing the fuel tank volume. This is why methane has yet to be utilized. Methane exists in an odd middle ground between the two most often used fuels. It is more efficient than kerosene, but not as efficient as hydrogen. It's also more convenient to store than hydrogen, although not as much as kerosene. As SpaceX attempts to unleash the magic of reusable rockets, its advantages are only now becoming apparent. Because methane is a single carbon hydrocarbon, it produces substantially less soot when burned, compared to the long-chain molecules present in kerosene, resulting in less engine damage over time. It has a greater boiling point than liquid oxygens, allowing much of the infrastructure required to liquefy and consume oxygen to also be used for liquid methane. When working on Mars with minimal infrastructure, this is critical. But most critically, methane can be produced from Mars's carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere, which is why it has suddenly become highly appealing to SpaceX. Cryo-freezing is now the most realistic alternative as carbon dioxide has the greatest freezing point of all the gases in Mars' atmosphere. We may cool the air to separate the carbon dioxide, which will freeze as a solid while the other gases stay as gases, in a process that is effectively the opposite of distillation. This naturally compresses the gas as well. Then, when we need to use it in our Sabiator reactor, we just heat it to create a high-pressure stream of CO2. Obtaining the requisite hydrogen, on the other hand, is significantly more challenging. The first alternative is to import it directly from Earth, but considering the amount needed and the difficulty of storing it for lengthy periods, this isn't a viable option. So in the long run, we'll need to extract it from Mars's resources. Water is found on Martian soil. However, it is most prominently found in the form of ice in the planet's polar regions. If we can find an effective way to mine the water, we can use electricity to turn it into oxygen and hydrogen, which can then be mixed with carbon dioxide to generate methane. Remember how we stated the molar ratios were crucial? This is why. The mass ratio of oxygen to methane is 4 to 1, due to the 2 to 1 molar ratio of oxygen to methane. Because the propellant mixer used by SpaceX's Raptor engine is 3.4 to 1, the entire process produces an excess of oxygen which may be used to power your Martian city's life support systems. A win-win. Elon Musk has his eyes fixed firmly on the dream of living on Mars. Change of fuel is just one of the first things he's going to change as he gets closer to his ultimate goal. That's all, folks. So, what do you think of the change in the fuel used? Is this change going to help SpaceX? Do let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive similar content in the future.